all of a sudden I was in the middle of ice and it was cracking all over me just around and panic of course and I turned around and dad was standing back there just sort of laughing we played in the jail I remember the cell being in there and this was some place we could go in and play because nobody, you know, it wasn't locked. They weren't using it too often. I don't ever remember anybody being in jail. Reen finally found them up in the girls' locker room crying because they were just sure that that dance had been a sin and God had punished them by turning the lights out. <laughs> The thing we did all winter was skate. Just as soon as the ice froze, we were someplace. And uh, every time I drive by the Bakke Slough now, you know what which one it is? The one by Biles. Right. Um, that was the, the earliest skating place because it wasn't deep and it would freeze. In fact, that's where my dad took me when he taught me to go in and out of skids when he, when I was driving. Oh. And I remember one of my grandsons being absolutely, you know, if you go like that and give, give a gas with a little turn, you can do a fast around. And I pulled that. I don't know which one it was, but <laughs> I was out here and wanted to turn around fast. And he was a little surprised. <laughs> That wasn't something Grandma did. So how old were you when you learned how to drive? I was nine years old when I first started driving. And I started on this lane right out here, coming down from the highway, because my dad had a beautiful registered German shorthead pointer huh? that somebody had given him, and he wanted to train for hunting. Did he so, have a name, the dog? Dotsy. <laughs> but he would stop up there, and he and the dog would come all the way down to the corner here. And then he would stand in the middle of the road and wave at me to come. But I had been there long enough, and after I learned fast, I always had a book with me in the car. So I had my head in the book when he is trying to get me to drive down. And, but after he had had to walk all the way back up once, I didn't pull that one again. But I remember that I, that is when I will say I learned to drive. I'm sure I'd had a little more, well, like any of you kids now, you're behind the wheel by the time you're four or five years old. But that was my official, driving all by myself. It wasn't in his mind that I would mess up this whole lesson with a book. That. So did he hunt with that dog? Yeah. And a shotgun and bird hunting? Yeah. We lived, lived, I still like canned pheasant breast. Oh. <laughs> he would bring the birds in. I don't remember be a mother ever being too enthused about cleaning them. But she would fry the wings and the legs and the, the parts beside, but she would can those breasts. And they had a just an unforgettable flavor. And I, then when she served them later, were they soup or what were they? Well, she'd take them out and... I think probably a cream. Hmm. She would cut the chicken up, although I remember these pieces of chicken breast. Mm -hmm. So they may have just been a treat. I don't know how many chicken pheasant breast you could get into one quart jar, but she did it. But we lived on the fried pheasant legs all fall. 
were people raising and releasing and stocking the pheasants, or was there just a good population around? Oh, there was a good population. I remember going someplace, and I think it was probably down around Juneburg Bridge. And we drove up, and the, there weren't leaves on the trees, but we drove up, and the branches were thick, pheasants just lined up on every branch in that whole area. And I'm sure my mind is just bigger than it actually yeah. was, but it was so surprising to see so many pheasant up in trees. Yeah, and it's a really weird year for pheasants this year because the males are already out fighting. I almost <laughs> ran over two of them in the middle well, of your road coming down here. <laughs> they, well, yeah, they, these are the younger ones. There's a difference in when they were the first hatch gone yeah. or killed maybe froze last spring something it's a different timing yeah and I don't know whether these are first or second but they're here but we we hunted and of course he, he loved coming out to the ranch doing anything out here so back to the ice skating so the first ice skating in the fall was on the slough I remember the year I went to school in Great Falls, I came home Thanksgiving and we went skating there then because the river wasn't deep enough. But I got onto the ice skating when we were talking about Stella Jean. Uh -huh. One of our family stories, which I didn't intend to go into here so much, was that Georgia would come out and go skating. And Dad loved to skate too, and he, but he, she wanted to stay there a little longer. And he was coming up the river hill when he looked back, and she had gone through the ice on one of the ice harvest holes, which weren't as thick as the other. And he got back down there in time to get her out. That's scary. Which is just one of the things that could happen. We usually skated on the river. We loved skating on the river. And I remember scooping snow off the ice, but I remember everybody, almost every day, went down and scooped it off the ice. And it was good skating. The, they put in skating rinks between the road and the school hill at oh. one that whole area was a skating rink and that I think is where older high school by high school they had a rink up there instead of depending completely on the river for it the river was not always too smooth has that area down by the river has that always been a park kind of no there's never been anything else really down there no however it wasn't always in quite the same place but um, we would go, they eventually put up some floodlights down there. Hmm. I'm not sure exactly why, but evidently skating in the dark wasn't what the parents felt our teenagers should be doing. And then you mentioned here skating on Beaver Creek? Well, that was when I would go out and stay with Darlene at... Albert Nelson's. Albert Nelson's place. And we would go all the way as far as we could skate up and back. And we yeah. had different different curves named as different towns. And we had different people living in different places. Just a totally imaginative trip. And it, we might go out, you know, over a weekend. And you didn't... I'm thinking this worked best in years when there wasn't snow and you didn't have to clear the ice or you just skated through a certain amount of snow? Oh, I don't remember snow. So maybe we just did it when the ice was right, Yeah, which is good. The rubber, t rubber ice. I, Dad went down and skated with us a lot, just stayed there. We learned you do not go near a branch sticking out of the ice along the edge because that's 
thin ice. But I remember skating from from town where the swimming place is now towards the east and all of a sudden I was in the middle of ice and it was cracking all over me just around and panic of course and I turned around and dad was standing back there just sort of laughing and he explained to me this is rubber ice and it was part of his teaching me something but the water on warm will come over the top of the ice and then freeze. It's safe underneath, but he wanted me to have that experience of knowing that that could happen. Were there ever any conflicts with the people when they were doing the ice harvest and the people wanting to skate on the ice that they'd already cleared off? They weren't harvesting when I was there. Mm -hmm. So we, I would have been skating, well after the, I was 10 years old when the Second World War started. And I had been in Minnesota in school for the first and second grade. So the third grade, from the third grade to the, through the sixth grade, I always considered my childhood years. Everything else was separated by, at that time and point, I was in Hinsdale. So the third grade through the sixth grade, do, did people still have ice boxes instead of electric refrigerators? Oh yes, all summers. So where did they get ice for those if they weren't doing the ice harvest? You haven't read my story about the ice house. But I, there's a whole article in one of those about a hard, Mr. Harden's ice house. And I can't actually place it. It was some place south of the Chester Hotel, up in there. But the picture here shows it a full building. I always thought it was just a roof, but because we kind of climbed on the roof up there. But that I have all written up. But no, there wasn't any ice harvesting really. Well, there had to have been because we sure ate a lot of ice. So was that, did people buy ice from yes. him? Yes. Yeah. Yes, it was a business. He had, he ran a truck, bought gas for the ice and had his regular route. Which you used to follow the truck on your bicycles. Oh, we did, but that's all written down. Okay. These other games, kick the can and any, any over. Well, uh, those games were played, and I suppose that would have been after we moved up to uptown. But the, the sidewalks, my, the first sidewalks I, I remember are all the wooden ones. Mm -hmm. Like the wooden one that I love seeing at the Legion Park now. That, that was every place, all the way from by our house, but the area in there, the fire hall was right there, but the area in there was a play area, and then going back from there towards the Chester Hotel was the jail, and the jail building now is the water building, although the jail cell is down at the museum. Mm -hmm. And we played in the jail. I remember the cell being in there, and this was some place we could go in and play because nobody, you know, it wasn't locked. They weren't using it too often. I don't ever remember anybody being in jail. But that area from the, where the Legion Hall is now behind the fire hall, and then back going up into the, the Chester Hotel was sort of our play area. And from twilight to after dark, all the big kids would come there to play. But I was grade school, which was, there was a big distinction. And this, in the Annie Iover game, 
you ran and tried to catch somebody, but everybody got to run off. As soon as it ha happened, or the kick the can, everybody disappeared into the shadows. And we little kids were left trying to find the big kids. And eventually they wandered back and we'd throw the ball over the house again and off they'd go. But I remember both of those games and I remember being so frustrated because I couldn't catch anybody huh. the, as the younger ones couldn't. So the real game was the big kids taking advantage of the little kids? No, I think the real game was the big kids getting off by themselves in the dark, leaving us, <laughs> us to be the excuse. But it was fun and fun and well it happens now too. As soon as there is something going on, everybody is there. You know, I, I didn't even remember putting, but they had um, basically a, a youth club down in the basement of the bank. And that would have been when I was probably sixth, seventh, eighth grade in that time, and I remember learning to dance down there, that that was part of the program. But they also had school dances after every ball game. You know, every Friday night one of the groups had the dance at school, and we didn't do as much traveling to games then. But the school parties were something that were very, very important, and it wasn't particularly, it wasn't especially a date thing. Everybody went to the dances, and you tried to dance, and tried to get everybody else to dance, and that. Did you have to be junior high or high school age, or could you go in elementary school? Well, I don't remember there being much. I think it was probably junior high and high by that time. And the, there, there were a few formal things. Like prom, I think was, mm -hmm. I shouldn't say a few. A few years they had a prom. How, how's that for making <laughs> it a little bit better? And they... The proms were special, but we had, the teachers had a lot of control and a lot of interest. And I think the year we did the junior prom, well, it was my senior year, we did, um, you know, we had the big gym. Do you remember the big gym at all there? I do. We took the two by fours and made a merry-go-round on the floor, the full width of the gym, and then had the upper part with streamers forming it, and had horses, cardboard horses painted, some with spots, some palomine. I mean, we knew our, our horse colors <laughs> very well, put up on each one of the posts to go around. And I remember especially Reen Locke was, was dating Frank Locke. Reen Jones was dating Frank Locke at the time. And we thought it would be pretty funny, so we put Frank's brand on the, one of the horses. She came down and that was not acceptable and the brand was changed to a generic brand. And looking back, I just, um, you had to admire the fact that her personal life was not part of her professional life as a teacher and we don't get involved in things like that. However, that was the last fight I had with Monty Denham. We were clear up on the top of the bleachers. And from the time we were three years old, I was beating him up in the middle of the gravel street. Had no trouble at all. And here I was a senior in high school up painting these horses on the top level of the bleachers of the old gym and he smeared me with paint. 
And I took after him like that. And the result of it was, he had me pinned to the wall laughing in my face while I was trying to beat on him. And that was the last time I ever tried to beat on a dead one. But the horses got up. The must have been my sophomore year, we had a Hawaiian theme. And the freshman girls were Joe's class. And that was, this doesn't quite fit in timing. But they, ha they had the whole, all the girls in the class were going to do this hula dance. So they lined up all the hula skirts. And this was down in the big gym, too. And practiced and practiced. Well, when it came down to it, Joe and Peggy Denham were the only two who would do the dance. They got out. This is the intermission of the prom. Got out and started dancing to the records. I don't know what... They've changed technical names so often that I'm... Back. But they started dancing, and something happened to the whole electrical system in the gym, and the lights went off. Totally. And eventually came on, and Joe and Peggy were gone completely. Couldn't find them any place. Reen finally found them up in the girls' locker room, crying, because they were just sure that that dance had been a sin and God had punished them by turning the lights out. <laughs> uh, so were all of those dances, were they with records or were there live bands ever? We had a lot of live bands. The um, Stuff, see Stuff and Taylor and Conlon played the piano, but they had a little three-piece band that did a lot, the big dances were, the ordinary school Basketball. dances were not, we didn't have for them. But what, what I remember especially happening, fall, the first school party of my senior year, we realized every boy in high school who could dance had graduated the year before. Now this is a crisis, <laughs> and the we had mother had put redone our living room just before junior prom the year before. Carpet, first one we ever had. We ended up pushing the piano up enough to pull the carpet out and roll it up in our house and dance there that whole fall. And kids that Warren Morris told me, and he, he must have been in grade school when I was a senior, he said, oh, I remember, I learned to dance at your house. <laughs> but it was just uh, out of necessity. We were going to have school parties, we had to have dancers, and some of them were great. Um, Buckshot Amistoy had that music, and Frank Hopwood had just really good ryth rhythm to dance, but all of those kids learned to dance.